guys and welcome back to another episode of From the Shadows. Now before I show you some highlights, of course, I just want to quickly explain what's going to happen. So basically, we're going to be doing the double live film against Final today, um, which means that I've already played two matches and I've got one more in between the two Final games. However, what you're going to see right now is the highlights of the two games I've already played and the one I've yet to play because I just like to fuck with the timeline. That's what I do. If we could get 150 likes on the episode two, that would be fantastic. We're not going to do a question of the day um, at the moment uh, because we've got so much stuff to do in today's episode. So I hope you don't mind about that. Um, you might notice I'm more illuminated than usual. That's because I changed the batteries in my light um realized that actually it wasn't bright at all and now i can't see anything i'm gonna be snow blind by the end of this video but that's fine by me um so without further ado here's some highlights and i'll join you guys in a sec for the final game chance free kick straight in the back of the net lorion nil paris one and our great form in the cup away from home against big sides continues salah uchan one nil paris steps up and bangs it in lorion one paris one in the cup we are not looking too good at this moment exactly much clutter there Orberg into the box he's got to pull it back he does cherries in the box and it is 2-1 to paris amazingly we've really started to turn up in this game lorion one paris two back to uchan on the edge out wide for Amara, he's into the box and he strike it. Wow, Lorion won, Paris 3 and what a turnaround. We really have turned up. Larby Amara puts it in the back of the net, 3-1 Paris. There we have it, Lorion won, Paris 3, our great cup form continues. The Monnier whips it all the way across and Erzturk's at the back post and it's in the back of the net. Toulouse have the lead. Toulouse won, Paris nil, a very scrappy game so far. Luis, nice little football here. Cherry, can he turn and shoot? Whips it through, perhaps will he shoot? Aslan does and Aslan scores, that's what I like to see. Toulouse won, Paris won, a thoroughly deserved equaliser from Ergen Aslan. He's given a new role and he's enjoying it. Oh my god, he's just a set-piece master. Toulouse won, Paris two, Salih Uchan with his second free kick in as many games. What a player he is. Bulans with a fantastic tackle, round for Cherry, must score, does score. So it lose one, Paris three. We've been absolutely clinical with these little tactical tweaks. Now we have a break on because we've got players overlapping. One of them is Part J1. He's all the way through. He has to do something here. Whips it out wide for Ruiz. He must score. Oh, he does. What an angle that is. To lose one, Paris four. Roberto Carlos Ruiz completing the win in theory. But two on one on him. Hopefully should do the business. Pelican whips it across. Erzturk should never be allowed to get past his man though. And he has done anyway. Disappointing. To lose two. Paris 4. We're still conceding goals, but at least we're scoring a few more. There we go, guys. To lose 2, Paris 4. Back-to-back -back wins is always important, and we needed that. Into Luis. Can he turn and shoot? Goes all the way out wide for Orba. Whips it across. Cherry's header in the off the post. Paris 1, San Etienne 0, Alberto Cherry, and that would put us up to 5th. And it's going to fall to him again somehow. Kolar's put it in the back of the net. Paris 2, San Etienne 1, Yaroslav Kolar, and what an amazing goal to score. Always needed here. Luis through for Cherry, puts it in the back of the net. Paris 3, San Etienne 0, Alberto Cherry, 40 goals this year. What a player he is. And he finally can Orba, can he whip one across? Goes round his man, back across for Luis, and it's in the back of the net. Paris 4. San Etienne nil, Luis with his 10th of the season. Great stuff from him. Right, guys, we're back. Um, so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the highlights. Um, obviously, the first two games, I know what's going to happen. I don't know what's happened with the San Etienne game, but you guys can tell me in the comments. No, don't. I, I will know by then. Uh, but basically, I made some tactical changes, which I will show you in a sec. And it seems to have worked, I think. It's hard to tell at this point. We've only got a sample size of two for me. Hopefully, the San Etienne game went well as well. Uh, but basically, what we've changed is thus. So, um, the only changes I've made. Now... Firstly, I've changed my defenders from both being on defence to one being cover and one being stopper. Now, I used to use that a lot with Portsmouth. It worked delightfully when I got it working properly. And it seems to do okay so far. But in order to do so, I didn't want to have an attacking fullback as well as someone on, um, like, uh, stopper here. Because it meant that we'd end up being a bit exposed if he stepped out of position and he was caught up the field. So, what I've done is I've dropped Ruiz, or what will be our right box, so it is going to be Ruiz, uh, back to a supporting player. And I've moved Part J1's role here up to attacking. That way we've got a nice sort of run down this wing here. Which means that we might have a little bit more support up to the strikers too, which means we get a little bit more of an attacking threat. But at the same time, we don't get caught short at the back so much. Um, on the left-hand side, it is the same though, with Wagner uh, supporting Aslan in this case. Although Aslan I've played a few times on the right, and he did in fact score when he played there. That's the main change that I've made. The other changes that I've made is I've taken off shorter passing. Um, I found that I was doing it in almost every game anyway and it just felt pointless to leave it on. And so far things are looking good. But there we go guys. Um, so I'll take a quick gander at the squad. Now here's what the squad looks like currently in terms of uh, things over the last couple of games really. Um, Umbar, although he hasn't played in a while, doesn't really count, so it's difficult to say. But there you go. Cherry's got 38 goals in 39 appearances. He does need to get a few more goals, though. He's starting to fall off the radar a little bit. Assist-wise, it's all about Luis. And the league before the San Etienne game currently looks like that. So we'll have to see how we do in that match. Now, before further ado, let's just jump straight in to today's game against Feyenoord. Um, so they're playing a 4-4-1-1 type of system. Um, I'm not going to 
bore you by running through their entire team. But we'll take a little look at that uh, perhaps in the second game. So is that really all we've got? And Bar is still amazingly away on international duty to give you an idea of how long he's been gone. Uh, I've actually filed a missing persons report on him. He's been gone that long. Cherry, Aslan, Luis, Partje won, Uchan, Bulens, Orberg, Sebastian Wagner, Sadibi, Ruiz, and Sigrist on the bench. We've got Francois. And Bar is back. Okay, why? Okay. <laughs> I'm an idiot. He wasn't available for the last game, so I just assumed he was still gone. Uh, so why isn't he in the team? 91% mm, fitness. I think we'll be okay, actually. Orberg's done a good, done a good job. Matas, Baguji, Bakabatar, Christians, and Robin Ruse, interestingly. And Christians gave away a penalty um, the last to be played, so it wasn't exactly ideal. But let's just jump straight in. We've got, you know, we're already three minutes on the clock, and I don't want this episode really to be stupidly long. That's the, one of the problems you have with double Livecom games, is they tend to go a bit long, and I don't really want that. Um, so anyone particularly stands out? Bruma is still there. Um, Vink. Verbiek, nope. No one that particularly stands out for me as being like, oh, I know him. Um, obviously, we're quite far into the future, so that's understandable. Now, Cherry is still doing a bloody good job lately. He's getting a few more assists under his belt lately, I have to say, actually. Um, we've got two in the last match, so that gives you an idea. And our midfield view, Aslan, does, look at that. He needs to contribute more, um, particularly with his assists, but we'll see. So, Feyenoord away. I feel that we can beat them at home. It's just a question of how much we can stem the flow a little bit away from home. I think they've got it in them to beat us and although we are the favorites for the game but we'd like to see if we can get through here that would be quite something if we were to get through and have a real crack at the europa league this year since we are of course essentially a champions league club uh, that came out and just couldn't quite get to it um and i don't know if we're going to be able to get into the champions league this year unless of course we won it whipped in there's four players at the back post and bulens does brilliantly there to clear it and we've got a bit of a break on here if luis can find a ball over the top he does to cherry now we've got men surging forward but still not trying to leave ourselves too exposed cherry all the way down to the wing here can he find a cross he can but nobody really there bulens thankfully is covering over at this right back position lovely little ball into uchan who has now signed a new contract by the way guys luis is through and he's hit the post that was the perfect opportunity to get this game off to a flyer but yeah luis has basically not luis uh, uchan has basically doubled his money uh which you know it costs us a bit but i think it's worth it you guys were pointing out how he always seems to come up with important goals for us he's a set piece specialist too and he scored a few free kicks this month as you've seen so i think it was worth doing basically keeping him around for at least a little while longer um and he's still sort of three and a half star player, so it made no sense to lose him, basically. So that was a bit silly of me even thinking about that, really. But he has joined us for another... He's extended his contract. Arbawi, ball across and... Oh, damn it. Uh, first goal of the game is Ruud van Voigt uh, for Feyenoord. And we are a goal down here in Holland. But it isn't, you know... It's not the end of the world for me. That's the way I'm looking at it. You know, we need to make it so that the second leg is recoverable. Um, sorry, my glasses are starting to blind me a little bit. They're steaming up as well. So I'm just going to take those off for a second. Rah! While this highlight is... Not loading, basically. Um, plus, it would give me a slight headache with the light. Um, our Bowie now. I'm commentating on it as if it was live. Van Voigt puts it in the back of the net for final. And we... Oh, hello. Instant chance now. Bulens' is ball in. Cleared away. We don't want to fall 2-0 down, though. That could be dangerous for us. Aslan. He really does need to look back out to the wing, but he doesn't. And we might... Oh, here we go. Aslan has now gone out to the wing. Uh-oh. That was a poor ball inside. And Varys can now bring it forward for final. Oh, he's left himself exposed there. Um, our Bowie again. Somebody put a foot in on him. Whips it across and... I would have been frustrated. Oh, God damn it. You just can't win, can you? You make a brilliant save and it just ends up somehow at the feet of their bloody player again. And now we're two goals down. A Bowie's given us the runaround down here and I thought the chance had gone when he saved that. And it somehow just ricochets into this path and uh, we're a better side than this, guys. Um, direct passing. I don't think that's... Should we try that? Like, I'm all for taking it off of short passing, but I don't know how direct is direct a good idea to go, really. Um, at this point, we need a goal back and we need one soon. It's all about getting some away goals on the board. Now, Uchan, he's got support over him. We've got a bit of an overlap here. Aslan, through for Cherry. It's a bit of a tight angle, but he's put it in anyway. He's offside. Good grief. Alberto, come on, mate. You can do better than that. Just hold your run slightly. It was he actually offside. I assume he was. Um, no. Oh, I don't think he actually was when the ball was played. He was at least level when it was played, but ah, uh, what can you do? Referees make mistakes. It just happens, doesn't it? Um, I'm not going to do a Mourinho. Um... I'm blaming the physio, people. That's what's happened. Yeah, we do need to close him down a little bit more. I think Orberg now. I might have to bring on Mbar in the second half if Orberg can't quite handle that. Because um, Mbar does give us that attacking threat. Aslan, can he whip it across? No. Oh, Partey wants through. Luis is in the back of the net. Not Luis, but the ball is, and that's beautiful stuff. Luis is ninth goal of the year, and he just 
is so important for this team now. He's got to be one of the best players we have. This was really nice football as well. Composure shown here. I thought Padre one would have shot here, but he doesn't. He pulls it across, and Luis just rolls that into the bottom corner of the net. And that is final two, Paris one. And suddenly things are looking a lot more rosy for us. The equaliser is not out of our grasp now. However, I am going to tell them to concentrate a bit more because we actually have only hit the target twice so far. Possession is looking solid. Orberg has made a lot of mistakes, and I'm 6.3 at the moment. I might even be tempted to bring... Um, and bar on at half time, to be honest, because we'll get someone a bit more. And Cherry's not had the best game too. Um, but unfortunately, options off the bench are a little bit limited because Ivor Holt has picked up an injury, um, and he's going to be out for three weeks. And because we've only played like a week since then, he's going to be missing for the next. He probably missed uh, both games in this tie, which is a little disappointing. But what can you do? Uh, their system is generally the same, so I'm okay with that. Wow, we didn't actually get a highlight direct from the kickoff. That's very very rare. So DB now. But I'm hoping with Mbar on the pitch now, um, we might have a bit more of a force down there. He's a much better player than um, Orberg. And hopefully, you know, yeah, he does stupid things sometimes, but he's got a real attacking threat to him as well. And Orberg just doesn't offer that at the moment. But he is getting back into a good position. Hopefully he can make some important tackles in the second half as well. He's been dragged right inside there for some reason. Zero. Now whips it all the way across. Van Voigt. Bahui. Ah. Arbaoui. Whips it across. Varis and it's in the back of the net with a glancing header. Are you kidding me? Hmm, that's disappointing. We're 3-1 down now, and, you know, we definitely deserve to be behind, but is... No, well, then again, they've had three clear-cut chances. I mean, they've taken them all, and fair play to them for that. We need to do something, and we probably need to go on attacking a little bit here, and I'm just going to tell them to concentrate again, because we're still not hitting the target enough with the shooting. Right, Uchan, another free kick chance, perhaps. No, this time it is saved. He has scored from that kind of range before, so I wasn't particularly... Um, I wouldn't have been shocked had that gone in. He really does have a wonderful right foot on him. Uh, whip downfield, and that should be won by our... Thank God for that. There's four of them there. Oh, God's sake, guys. I don't know what to do and make defensive changes. We Every little change I make seems to work for one game, and then in the next match, it just seems to stop working again. And I have made the changes you guys suggested, but we're not, we haven't stopped conceding goals. Bahui, Arbawi. And it's not to do with the quality of the players, too, because they are very good defenders for the most part. Oh, come on. Is that offside? Seriously? Ah, oh. 4 1 down. That's disgusting. Like, this doesn't look like a 4-1 game. Is he offside? Mm, no, he's not, because Mbar, for some reason, has dropped really deep and has played him on side. Seagrass can do nothing about it. And amazingly, we're 4-1 down here. This is a bit of a shitter, I've got to say. Um, we need some goals. We need to get at least two goals. Well, oh, one goal back would be fine, but two would be preferable. Cherry needs to pull that across for someone. We need to keep on this game. We can't afford to let this one drop now. Luis. Cherry's... What is that, Alberto? Oh, good... Reef. Um, yeah, he does need to be close down. They've got some danger on those wings, I have to say, but we are in a bit of a bind here. Um, I'm going to bring on Baguji up top because Cherry has been woeful today and we just need something at the moment just to try and stem the flow a little bit. Uchan has not had the best game either, to be honest, but then again, neither serves the DB and then again, we don't really have anyone... Wagner's not been great either. Ruiz hasn't been fantastic either. I'm going to bring on Bakamatar. I just am. We've been bad all across the board today, which is a real shame considering how well we've played in the last couple of games. And as usual... Oh, come on. Is that... I... Oh. The moment you make the substitutions, it's like injury time. And now we're down to 10 men. Hang on, have we made... Yeah, we have made all the substitutions, haven't we? I can't believe it. We're down to 10 men as well now. They'll probably get another one. I don't really know what to do because we don't have much choice. I can't really sit and defend a 4-1 deficit. We have to get a goal back. 4-2 is a doable, you know, turnaround in the home leg. But 4-1 is just dunzos. Then again, 5-1 would be even more dunzos. Verbiek, uh, from the horrific angle, he's put it in the back of the net. Everything fine out of touch has gone in, basically. Um, they've been the better side, but 5-1? It's... Uh, well, there you go. Um, that looks like us out of the Europa League. Real disappointment, really. Um, then it would allow us to concentrate on trying to qualify for the damn thing next year. That is a really crappy performance. Based on everything we've done this month, it just seemed to come out of nowhere. Get to the ball first. Oh, come on. They're not even trying now. It's one of those games, again, that like you have seems to... Well, we seem to have them quite frequently, where every single touch your player takes goes eight yards in front of them. Oh, come on! I... <laughs> uh, you can only laugh. Everything has gone in for them. Um... That's not to say we've been good, but we've not been 6-1 bad. We really haven't. They've just... They keep... I, mean, I don't know what to say at this point. We might as well just shut up shop here and just go back to counter. There's no point in trying to push for goals at this point. We just need to stop conceding anymore. We're going to have to pull off an absolute miracle in the home leg to get anywhere near them. How are we getting...
I'm not saying anything because it's just getting silly now. Uh, it I don't know. It seems to be kind of what, what happened against Valencians, where suddenly they just steamroll you out of absolutely nowhere, just without really seemingly making any tactical switches. Their tactics don't seem to have changed at all throughout this, and we were totally fine and in, in the game at one point, and then all of a sudden they score fucking six, seven goals! Um... So there we go, and I'm sure loads of you with the hindsight police have got loads of ways I could have prevented it, but that doesn't work unless you actually, you know, sometimes you get shit like this. We just seem to be getting a lot more shit like this than usual. Um, this season just seems to be full of games like this, where admittedly they are vastly the better side, there's no denying that, but they're not, they're not 8-1 good. I just, I don't know what to say anymore. This team just seems to be completely incapable of stringing anything together, and I don't really understand why. We have some fantastic performances against teams, and then we come up against a team like Firelord, who we should really be beating, and you lose 7-1! Ah. It's a shame, is the best way of putting it. I'm not really even sure if it's worth me uh, live coming the second leg of this match, because what's the point, really? We've lost the game 7-1. I'll probably get the sack, to be honest, at this point. Um, that was a shocking performance, and I don't know where it really came from. Didn't feel like a 7-1 game. I still think 7-1 is harsh, but... Ah, uh, what can you do, really? Um, I'm not even sure. You, we'll decide in a minute. I, I may as well do it, but I'll, I'll join you guys in a sec for the second leg to see if we can win 6-0 over them. That'll be a fun one, won't it? I'll see you guys in a sec. Right, guys, we're back. I decided to just, 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 just jump straight into this game, basically. There's no need for any preamble to this, basically. We're on attacking from the off. We've got to absolutely go for this, um, basically. Uchan with the ball in. Van Voigt is going to come back to him. We need six goals in this match and without conceding. And that's just... its We've basically given ourselves a mammoth effort. And considering our form, other than in this competition lately, we've been brilliant. It's really strange. Aslan. And the ball is ricocheting all over the place. And that should be cut out by Wagner, though, for Balguji. We just need to keep the pressure on them, really, um, for the entirety. But they can just sit there and absorb it. That's the problem. Luis, um, actually, one sec, guys. I forgot to put the replays back on. Uh, we'll just do that now. Goal action. Voila. Jerry's through. And he scored after just one minute... Paris won, final nil. The thing is, we'll probably win the game like 5 nil or something and then end up going out as a result of the seven goals that we shipped in Holland. It's going to be crazy. I still think we'll comfortably win this home leg. And they won't really care, will they? Cherry turns and yet another goal in this competition for him. Takes his tally now to 10 and 41 in all competitions this year from him. We need to just keep on pushing, basically. Um, I don't think we should go more direct, to be honest. Um, I think we're pretty much happy with what we're doing. Although at the moment, we're not really creating a great deal. But who Valis, you know, we have to go attacking for this game. There's no choice. Uh, we couldn't afford to stay on control with the way things are going at the moment. Oh, God, Varus is through again. And a good save there from Sigurist. But 22 minutes gone, and, you know, it all looks so well, so good for us from the start. That's the problem. Ruiz, if we can get another one here, though, there's a chance. Well, there isn't a chance, but you know what I mean? And Cherry's off the post this time. Oh, the luck just isn't there, is it? Cherry hits the post with his header. Probably fine, he'll still bag himself a hat-trick in today's game. Um... Right, okay, things are not working in that sense. Maybe we should listen to my uh, assistant and play at a slightly higher tempo. I'm going to push higher up as well. We just have to do something. Um, because at the moment, we're going to exploit the flanks as well. We're just going to try and do something for the rest of this game because we have to. We have no choice. Um, and if anything, look, they're still looking like the better side, to be honest. They're having a few long shots, but still. Umbar into Aslan. A second goal before half-time would give us a vague hope, but you never know. Barguji, Cherry, can he turn? Luis blocks. Barguji, and it's saved on the line by Guido. Ah, god damn it. Um, see, this is the thing. If we could have just kept it to a decent scoreline in... But once we got the, the injury as well and had to go down the 10 men, I probably should have shut up shot, but still, we just looked completely at sea at that point. It's a real shame because uh, we've been... I know, it just comes out of nowhere, those results, and it just really does seem to fuck you right where, you know, you're just doing quite well in most respects, and then suddenly, something like that just comes along and just wipes you out, basically. Um, unfortunately. I'm not really sure what we're expected to be in the Europa League at the moment regarding our sort of position rise in it, but I imagine we were expected to get a little bit further than this, to be honest. But I think, you know, for now, we go out fine, but we have to concentrate on qualifying for the Champions League next year. If we've still got that in the tank, we're like six, seven points off of that, I think. Um, so we need to really push it for those last sort of 13 matches. Ruiz whips it across Aslan's ball, and it is 2-0 to Paris FC. Um, just need the next four goals to come very, very quickly. But what I do feel is if we were to get two or three, they might start to just shut up shop knowing full well that um, they can't afford to let us come onto them too much. So that might just allow us onto them a little bit, but I, I just can't see it somehow. Um, unfortunately, it's just looking like one of those games. Um, we might have to actually overload soon. 
Right, changes. Ushan is looking a little bit knackered, but we don't really... Ah, uh, I suppose we've got Samsonov, and he's not had the best game, to be fair. Barguji has had a woeful performance, frankly, but we have so little in that area uh, to bring in at all that we may just have to leave him out there at this point. Um, I really don't want to, though, but what other choice do we have? Robin Ruse? It's, that would be silly of me. In fact, I'm actually tempted to push Uchan up and bring um, Samsonov on for Barguji, just because Uchan can play there. I know he's a little bit knackered, but he's got that goal in him that we kind of want. Um, Amara, maybe to come on for one of these two lads, Wagner or Sadibi. If I, like Wagner's played worse, but Sadibi's a worse player. And perhaps that makes the difference, right? We'll go for... I'm going to have to go... Um, but actually, we'll set it to overload first because we need the goals. We need them fast at this point. And it's going to have to be, you know, Red Star against Feyenoord. Uh, or is it PSV? I think it was PSV, actually. Type of situation we've got on our hands here. This is going to have to be a miracle on ice, so to speak, for us to score four more times in the remaining 25 minutes. But you just never know with these things. Although you really do. That's 10 minutes down. Um, that's 15 minutes down. Nothing's going to happen at all, is it? <laughs> um, thing is, we're comfortably beating them 2-0 here and if we'd have just not completely capitulated in the ho the away leg we'd have been completely fine I think and that's what you get though isn't it when you get a tie like that where you lose 7-1 in one of the legs things are always going to be bad for you and it really does suck when that shit happens but what can you really do about it Cherry 10 goals in there uh, look at that Fulham have got a couple of pairs right up there as well but there you go I suppose uh, by the way that Danny De Bruyne guy that plays for Blackburn actually won the uh, European Golden Boy award so he's a bloody good player I don't think we deserve to go out oh sorry Obviously, we did. We lost the games. But I just feel like that first leg was just an absolute clusterfuck of a match. We seem to get those way too often. And they just come out of nowhere. We're playing fine and then boom. But there we go, guys. So in the next episode, we're back into just sort of pure old... Uh, oh, well, you know what's going to happen. It's all about PSG. That's the next game. Um, so we've got a game against uh, Stad Khan. We've got a few away games coming up, actually. We've got Stad Khan in the league, which we'd like to win. We've got Le Mans in the cup. Finally, a lower league side. Only second division. But there you go. And then we've got Stad Ream away from home. Those games are massive. We, I want three wins out of those games. I really do. And in Marseille at home... I want to win in that one too. I want to win our next four matches and all competitions uh, so we can win six in a row and get some real momentum going for these final few matches of the year. Because we've got PSG, Monaco, Stad Rene to play, followed by Valenciennes, Lyon, uh, Nice, Tours and Bastia. I'll tell you what, guys. Our running is actually not bad. Our last five games, three of which are at home against Valenciennes, Lyon, they're all against sides in the bottom half of the table, and most of them are at the bottom of the league. So I think there's a real chance that we could actually make a go at this. I just don't know. Have to tune in for the next episode to find out. So, guys, if you like what you've seen, which you probably won't, but there you go, please do drop a like on the video anyway. And uh, if you'd like to even more than that, please do subscribe to the channel for more Outcaster icons and From the Shadows in your inbox every single day at 7 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode for our grudge match, of course, against Paris Saint-Germain. We need some good points on the ball before that game, though. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.